this is Victoria and I have been playing too much Animal Crossing. Do you need the most expensive art tools to make art? Well, there's true that there are a lot of good qualities that expensive art tools have, like they're resistant to fading, they have good color pigmentation, their nibs are better quality. Sometimes we can find those things in more affordable versions. I've been talking a lot on how much I like Copic markers, but I want to see what other things are out there. You know, more alternatives. Plus, I kind of feel like Copic markers are just a little bit muted. Um, could be the colors that I chose to have on my wallet, but sometimes I feel like they need a little bit more saturation. So I got an email from this company called Parku, and they asked me if I wanted to try some of their products. So I obviously said yes, and they sent me this. Let's try them out. These are the Parku dual tip art markers. This case here holds 80 markers. According to the case, these are alcohol based inks that are waterproof and fade resistant. Even if the case is presented in a vertical position, it's best to store all your markers horizontally to avoid the inks pulling down into the bottom. Upon opening the case, I immediately noticed the neon colors. But I have trouble seeing what colors I really have unless I see them in a rainbow configuration, so I'm gonna take them all out and organize them. There's really no science behind this, I just organize them how I perceive them. In between the markers, there's this card that you're supposed to color with them to have a scan like a sampler. I'll do this after I test them out first. Let's open one of the markers to take a look at it. The markers themselves don't have much info printed, but not that you really need it. The, they have two nibs, a small pointed one and a chisel one. In this aspect, they're similar to the original Copics. The nibs look sturdy and the shape really is the same as the Copics. I bet if I use the Copic tweezers to pull it out, it'll actually be the same shape. They don't feel cheap at all. The barrel feels very sturdy, much more than the Daiso markers. It does have a faint smell of alcohol, but that's totally normal for alcohol-based markers. After I organize them in my rainbow arrangement with grey and special colors at the end, I'm gonna try them out. I'm gonna use smooth bristol paper and marker paper. These markers are juicy. The color difference we see here is very common when using different types of paper. We can see the ink on the Bristol paper kind of bloated a little bit, but this again is due to the paper. Here I'm testing a Copic marker and we can see that it's doing the same thing. Next, I'm gonna swatch all the colors. I have a bit of trouble opening them for the first time, but because they were really sealed up. After opening them once or twice, it was much easier. When I tried the gold marker, I was really surprised. I expected normal marker ink with just a golden like color, but this is basically like a metallic sharpie in an art marker form, which, is, which I thought was really great. With the neons though, I shed a single tear. I really hoped the colors would be a lot brighter. The video can't show the, cor the colors accurately, but when I try them against these highlighters, you could really tell the difference. They're still pretty bright, but not as bright as I would like. This is a really nice color selection for bright illustrations. There's a lot of different skin tones available as well. So at, the, at this point, I think it looks very promising. Before I started my test illustration, I wanted to fill out the card it came with. And I had my first marker casualty. Ink had just pulled at the bottom on the smaller ink. 
nothing that a little bit of alcohol and a tissue can't fix. But this is very common for alcohol markers. It has happened a lot to me with darker colors in any brand. Perhaps this is due to the pigments, although I'm not exactly sure what it is, but this is why you store them horizontally. Okay, time to draw. I'm gonna do a pretty simple cutie to test the markers out. I wanna know if I can do gradients with these, as that's my favorite thing to do with markers. And I'm thinking I'm gonna try using the neon pink and the soft peach, thinking about the painting that I did a couple days ago. But the moment that I put that neon pink on the paper, I immediately thought I had ruined it. I totally ruined it. I don't want to have to trace the dra this drawing on a new piece of paper, but I totally blew it. The color is too strong. That's everything that was going through my head as I was doing this. Now, because I was too lazy to redraw it, I just kept going at it. I just put on so many layers of ink, so much that it started pulling on the paper. But the more ink that you use, the best is going to mix. So I kept working at it, trying to do more and more gradient shading, like I was trying to mix them in. And surprisingly, it started to work. The color started to mix, even if I didn't have a brush nib to do kind of like softer layers of color. For her hair, I wanted to do a purple-pink base. I am letting the, the layers dry a little bit because it gets to a point where you're just pushing the ink away rather than mixing it. You see, the good thing about using marker paper is that alcohol doesn't instantly evaporate, so that's how we can get these colors to mix so well. It's a little bit of balance between how much ink you actually put on it, so you gotta try a lot of times before you really get comfortable with it. You gotta be patient and wait for it to dry when you're doing all the layers of colors, though. I'm adding more dimension with purple and gray shadows, just fe freely following the curves of her hair. I left inking for the final step because I didn't want to have to worry about messing up the line art with all the ink from the markers that I was just laying on the paper. Plus, if you mess it up and color outside your pencil lines, you can kind of hide it in the step. I'm going to be using Copic Multiliners and a Sakura Micron Pigma brush.
going to leave the background white because I've had really bad luck with using markers for, to color a whole page like this. But for the first time, I'm able to color the background without it looking like my ink is running out. These markers really are full of ink. I'm really happy with how they performed. The color saturation really makes me think of strong colors like you can find on Sharpies, which, you know, are alcohol-based markers. But these art nibs really help making it easier to do your illustration. Even though price-wise they're comparable to the Daiso markers, I really think they are really similar in performance to Prisma color markers. I really think I could be even mixing them with Copics without any problem. I'm so surprised. <laughs> um, this whole box right now, uh, the time that I'm recording this, it's retailing for about $35. And they're great. <laughs> I'm still shocked how good they are for the price that they are. Um, I really like the case. I feel that it will be a great thing to travel to conventions with, to do kind of like commissions or art on the go. I'll be leaving the links below and all the links also support this channel. So maybe give them a try. The only thing that I was a little bit disappointed was that the neons were not as neon-y as I like. But other than that, I really like the palette. So I think I will be reaching for them a lot more in the future for because it's a really good match for the things that I like to draw. As usual, you can see all the art on my Instagram and thanks to my patron for all the support and I will see you next time. Ciao, ciao.